How far government agencies can go to enforce these camping bans is really an issue that's currently before the Supreme Court. San Francisco city leaders have been fighting for the right to clear out these camps as a matter of health and also safety. Lauren Toms went along with a man who's in charge of cleaning up these encampments. It is a job he admits few people would want. Well, Lauren got to see just how these crews try to approach the difficult task of throwing out someone's possessions with dignity and an example of the best case outcome. This encampment in the mission is about to be torn down. And while to most people, it may look like another case of cardboard boxes being used by unhoused people to camp out, to Daryl Dilworth, it's a clear sign of improvement. Six months ago, both sides of the streets was lined with structures, structures like the one that you see up ahead, and tents. It's a daunting task and one of the least desirable jobs in the city. The smells alone would turn off most instantly, but Dilworth sees his worth in the process. And they're doing work that other workers throughout the city, they refuse to do because it's so tedious. Uh, you're dealing with hazardous materials. You're dealing with human feces. You're de dealing with urine. You're de dealing with uh, unknown substances, needles, and not many city employees really want to deal with that. A native San Franciscan, he's on a mission to not only restore the city's streets to the beauty beneath, but provide dignity to the process. That hasn't always been the case. They, they would just come and take it out and just throw all your you know, just like no respect, no communication. We were like at war with him. The encampment being cleared here belonged to John DeBella. He spent most of his life unhoused in the mission, but today accepted housing offered by part of the multi-agency team tasked with clearing the area. This process of clearing encampments has seen a huge overhaul in the last five years, but remains a controversial process at the center of a Supreme Court battle over who can legally live on the street. You know, as long as they respect us, then we respect them and we just clean up real quick and go. And if we have to, we'll just come back later or something. Rewind 72 hours ago and flyers like these were being posted, alerting those in the area when this cleaning would take place. But each experience is unique, Dilworth says. Here, an individual with mental illness is resistant to the process, an encounter that's becoming more common as they carefully comb through items, both cherished and soiled. These are the times when we get blamed for taking personal items, and this would be the personal items that they're talking about that we're throwing away. Stuff that we deem de unsalvageable. Like I said, soil with feces, and obviously he's been there for quite a while. This situation was on the verge of escalating, but quickly dampened when a firefighter steps in. I'm going to make some phone calls, and I'm going to see if we can get you in a better spot, okay? The man accepted housing and services, a test of how this process is intended to work, and a rare case of added red tape having a positive effect. It makes me feel happy because we're making positive progress. We're not just moving individuals. We're offering them services. We're offering them a chance to get out of their situation into a better situation. And it gives us an opportunity in, in, in the process to actually clean and sanitize the streets as well. Tossing soiled items and policies behind to make room for cleaner times ahead. Just yesterday, San Francisco released its latest point in time homeless count. So it showed overall homelessness was up 7% from two years ago. But the number of unsheltered people living on the streets or in tents dropped 13%.